we got the yearly meeting of the NRA, and of course the head of the NRA, Wayne LaPierre, is there giving his big keynote speech. We've got a couple of sections of that we're going to show to you. The first, though, is a, like we like to talk about the idea that the NRA is a bunch of people who are kind of scared that they're losing the country, like it's slipping away from them. And you know, we could, if we wanted to, put together a big montage of all of that, but that's too much work. Let's see if Wayne LaPierre, in just one paragraph, can perfectly encapsulate that idea. You know, freedom has never needed our defense more than now. Almost everywhere you look, something has gone wrong. You feel it in your heart. You know it in your gut. Something in our country has gone wrong. The core values that we believe in, the things we care about most in our lives are changing, eroding, our right to speak, our right to gather, our right to privacy, the freedom to work, to practice our religion, and raise and protect our families the way we see fit. Those aren't old values. They aren't new values. They are core freedoms. The core freedoms that have always defined us as a nation we feel them. As we are here this afternoon, we feel them slipping away. <laughs> I teared up a little yeah. bit. What yeah. a great fucking speech. Yeah. Jesus. I, I love that the shots to the audience because it could not look more like an 80s era Gallagher audience minus the joy. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody is enjoying the head of the NRA's speech. Why did you go? This is what you're going to get. Hey, this is yeah, what... So he's scared. He's scared about the loss of rights. And I think that. Uh, we probably agree. We are losing some of our rights. We just don't seem to agree with Wayne LaPierre about which rights those are. Right, and I don't even I don't even agree that he's actually afraid of losing some of his rights. I mean, he mentioned a number of things, including freedom of religion. I mean, really, you're going to argue about how religion is being attacked right now when you have 33 states that don't recognize same-sex marriage, when you have anti-abortion legislation being passed mm -hmm. in many red states. I mean, religious people get to practice their religion, and on top of that, they get to dictate our morality. Yeah. So that's really religious uh, or religion being attacked. And then he goes on this like ridiculous thing about privacy. Really, I, I haven't heard you talk about how our privacy is being violated until now. You're worried about the NSA? How come you've never given a speech about that? Those are all great points, Anna, because he, what he does here is, is, a, is a very solid trick that, that political folks and politicians and, and sort of uh, and charlatans like Wayne LaPierre have used for years, which is that they talk about things you're losing when, of course, there is no danger, there is no threat, and you're not losing any of those things. Notice that he talks about the heart and the soul, because he, what he really is saying is, I can't give you any actual concrete examples of mm -hmm. anything that you're losing, any freedoms, so I'll just say that you feel it in your heart, you feel it in your gut, in your soul, in your yeah. veins, in your blood, but not, you know, uh, in your ears or anywhere you could you know, read about it with your eyes. Or in your brain. Or in your you're brain, right. Yeah. None of it's actually happening. There's not one example. It's just this vague sense that the life you know and yeah. want to protect is slipping away, and it's just complete horseshit. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of the episode of The Newsroom where the fake Michelle Bachman is talking about losing rights and everything, and Will McAvoy says, can you name three rights you don't have today that you had five years ago? And yeah, I think... Uh, look, he's a terrible speaker, obviously, and that's why people aren't exactly like giving him a grouse. Harry Reid looked like Jesse Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> like he can't say gut without touching it to sell it. But, but I think that he, what he is good at, and why he is the head of the NRA, is he's perfectly reading his audience in terms of what they want to hear. They do think, in these very vague terms, that they're losing the country. It looks different. The clothing is different. The skin tones are different. It's sort of foreign to them, and they're very scared of it. And I think that he is accurately reading that. And I think that. Look, he wants to keep them scared, and so he's been vague up until now. But let's talk about even scarier things. Yeah. He's going to list about 50 different things that he's <laughs> currently terrified of. We know in the world that surrounds us, there are terrorists and there are home invaders, drug cartels, carjackers, knockout gamers, and rapers, and haters, and campus killers, airport killers, 
shopping mall killers, mass shooters. <laughs> he, uh, it's like uh, it's like Billy Joel's "We Didn't Start the Fire." That's what I keep thinking every time <laughs> that I heard that it has that great line. You know, Bardo, Budapest, Alabama, Khrushchev, Peyton Place, Princess Grace, trouble in the zoo. As I'm just listing things that happen. <laughs> you know. So um, with that in mind, I've taken his lyrics mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've crafted my own song. I'll be singing again. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <clears throat> <laughs> Terrorists, home invaders, drug cartels, knockout gamers, carjackers, rapers, haters, campus killers, airport killers, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> I don't remember the Marilyn Monroe, but, but I do yeah. like the song. <laughs> I can see that going. It places. also works. Terrorists, home invaders, drug cartels, knockout gamers. Like, that's good. It, is, it, yeah, sounds, it sounds really good. I would yeah, buy that yeah, album. It totally. feels like he, he, even in his version, threw in haters just to keep like the, the rhythm going or something. What are knockout gamers? Help a brother the out. knockout game was the idea that that, that people were, were randomly trying to knock oh. someone on the street. And so people. there were a couple of like videos that went viral about it of people actually doing this, and there was a lot of fear that it would become this big thing. It, it just hasn't. He hasn't moved on it from hasn't. it. And he no, they just love it because it's somebody being violent without a gun. Yeah, that's a good point. They can point to it and say that that's bad. See? See? Yeah. yeah. And so, look, he, he is scared, okay? I don't think that he's necessarily scared of home invaders. <laughs> and there, there's, so there's a couple of points I want to go over. The first, though, is we don't often necessarily get to give you a lot of good news on the program, and so I'd like to do that. <laughs> so Wayne LaPierre is telling you about how scared you should be of home invaders and carjackers and road ragers and rapers and things like that. <laughs> you are so, so, so much safer today than you were five years ago. Ago, let alone 10 or 100 years ago. The rates of rape are way lower than they were 30 or 40 years ago. All violent crime is down. And, we and, never hear and, this. And in regard to rape, just very quickly, let me buttress that because the each year that goes by, while it's still a problem, women are more and more comfortable with reporting it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and so they so can the get numbers some justice theoretically for what it should does be happen. going up, even if the crime is not. Yeah, going you would up, think so. It not. might actually be going down more than we right. think. Yeah, and and so uh, someone in a, in a video I posted posted a link to um, the the Angels of Our Better Nature, something like that, a book that's been written about how we are in historically great times in terms of violence, both in war and also just sorts of crime and things like that. But he doesn't get money donated to the NRA if he makes you feel safe. But you should feel safer. Society is progressing, and this is the fruits of it. As I was watching that, I mean the very first threat that he mentioned was terrorism. And it was the classic fear mongering that you would get on Fox News, the type of fear mongering that would convince the American people that yes, we need to do a preemptive war because there are weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. I mean, that kind of fear mongering is so destructive and, and so scary because it leads to irrational actions. And I love that you mentioned that the stats indicate that crime is going down, but that kind of information is super inconvenient for someone who's getting paid off by weapons manufacturers. Exactly. And then another bit of good news. Let's sp let's spread the good news. <laughs> God, do you want to hear the good news, Hannah? I do want to hear the good news. John, do you want to hear the good news? Exactly. Do the people want to hear the good news? Here's friend. the good news, everybody. Gun control groups are raising more money than the NRA. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a you know, bring seventy thousand people there to that. Uh, there's 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 these those they do bring. <laughs> They brought uh, seventy thousand. Stick to singing. People. They brought they brought seventy thousand people to the NRA convention, but they're not raising as much money, and this doesn't even count the fifty million dollars that Bloomberg is bringing. Yeah. And granted, these figures about who's raising more money, uh, gun gun control groups or the NRA pro gun groups, is a little unclear because there's all kinds of soft money that don't mm. doesn't have to be reported. But significantly, the old standard was that the NRA outraged that gun rights activists out raised people in favor of gun control by a hundred to one by a hundred to one but now in this 2014 cycle we have completely turned that around with very slight lead not even a slight lead gun control groups have raised 21.3 million dollars since the november 2012 elections 16.3 million raised by gun rights groups and that doesn't even count as i said the 50 million dollars <coughs> at least 50 million dollars pledged just by bloomberg other people will obviously contribute to that most of that money is going to be spent in the 2014 and maybe in 2016 in the election cycle. But look, it's significant, and, and you go get them with the money. Yeah. And, and the notion that, that we have maintained on this show for so long is that why are we so afraid of these guys? Mm -hmm. like, I, I, and I, get, I know the answer to that question, but there's a way to counter that, is make, you, make them equally afraid of the other guys, mm -hmm. of your own powerful lobby. And 
And obviously the, the lobby making something and producing something, guns, and the lobby who's not producing anything is at a disadvantage. But nonetheless, yeah. uh, evening the playing field, and uh, put, put the fear of God into some, why can't some people lose in states because they weren't in favor of gun control? Yeah, you. Would, I mean, look, it, it would be great right now, especially considering the past year we've had a lot of very high profile shootings and things like that. You would think that if anything was going to lead to some... The country's in favor of gun control, of, of common sense gun control. Of course exactly, they are. Yeah. And, and look, so you, you brought up that they, they have the advantage, at least in the money that, that's currently being reported, which is great. But Bloomberg's group has come out and said that even if they didn't have parity, let alone the advantage, they don't have to be able to outspend the NRA in every area. They just need to be able to back up candidates so that they're free to vote the way they actually right. want to. That's right. And, and that by itself is, is, is great. And that's why I think he's trying to sort of get out in front of it and reinvigorate the fear in, mm -hmm. his, in his audience because he needs them to donate more money. He needs them to talk to their neighbors because as much as he says that Bloomberg is just one millionaire, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. they are actually scared of him. Isn't it kind of amazing, though, that out of all of the different threats that he mentioned that aren't actual threats in society today, he failed to mention the one thing that people should be afraid of, and it's mass shootings, random shootings mm -hmm. in malls. Like That happens so regularly that I have to be honest, on the Young Turks, we get kind of tired of reporting on it. Yeah. It's become so commonplace. So it's just interesting that out of everything, that's the one thing he left out. Well, well I'll, right before we move on, because I know you want to move on, uh, you should be scared of that in terms of violence. But w one of the reasons I brought up the, the rates of violent crime is I want people to like to get out of that post 9-11 mindset that someone taking your life is how you're likely to die and that's what you should worry about and that's what you should prepare for. No, you're most likely to die of heart disease or cancer or diabetes or these other sorts of things that to some extent you can prepare for through diet and exercise and getting health insurance and stuff like that. Like I know that's not as sexy as like, like shutting down a jihadist cell or something, but that's what you should do. You should wear your seatbelt, you should eat fruits and vegetables, that's what will extend your life. Yeah. yeah, stop being so stressed. Don't, exactly, you know. relax, sleep, like Ariana Huffington right. says. Meditate, yeah. perhaps, like Russell Simmons says. Fulfill uh, your dreams. Don't die sort of little by little, uh, piece by piece, uh, every single day when those dreams are unfulfilled. That was beautiful. Yeah, great PSA <laughs> Is that by from the Young Turks.